I'm a recent Tomb Raider convert. I have played some of the older Tomb Raider games, though I've never owned any of them, but I never really understood the broad appeal of the franchise until I bought and played the 2013 Crystal Dynamics reboot. I got something from that game that I didn't really experience in any of my admittedly brief prior experiences with the franchise, an actual story arc. Gone was the static, confident, cracking-wise character of Lara Croft, replaced by this bright but admittedly unsure and inexperienced Lara right at the beginning of her career. I mean, sure, she was still a total bad A, but it was like at the time she didn't realize it, and the story followed her progression from a timid intellectual to ice-picking a supernatural samurai in the back. I totally bought that story arc, and I loved the game as a result. So my expectations were high going into Rise of the Tomb Raider. Scarcely have I expected more from a game than I expected from this one, especially in terms of story. But can I tell you what I didn't expect? I didn't expect that coherent and well-crafted character arc from the first game to carry seamlessly into the sequel. We just don't get that outside of some RPGs. With shooters, there's a series tentpole character, and they're the same in pretty much every game. I was expecting a still mostly unsure Lara to get unwittingly thrown into something and then have to reluctantly kill a bunch of dudes to get back out, just like last time. What I got was a Lara built on the experiences of the first game into something closer to the Lara of the original games. She's maybe not quite that sure of herself, but she's certainly a lot more confident than she was in 2013, almost as if she'd spent a week trying to survive on a supernatural island that was trying to kill her. There's no sign of the hesitation that we saw in the first game when it comes to killing folks, and the primary factor limiting her ability to open up a can of Grade A whoop on the whole Siberian tundra is a lack of supplies more than anything else. She's an intellectual who has gone through some harrowing supernatural crap, and she's come out the other side with some burning questions about pretty much everything. It's, well, pretty believable. And it's a great continuation of her character arc, and makes this game feel like the second part of a trilogy in a way I've never seen in a shooter. I was very pleasantly surprised, and on story grounds, I'd recommend this game to pretty much everyone. Another thing that pleasantly surprised me was the quick time events, or rather, lack thereof. If you recall my review of the 2013 Tomb Raider, you'll know that those quick time events very nearly killed the game for me before the story could pull me in. And as fun as it is to get repeatedly disemboweled by a wolf because I took my hands off the keyboard during a cutscene, it's extremely refreshing to not have to worry about that kind of thing. Rise of the Tomb Raider did away with pretty much all of the quick time events, and the game is immensely more enjoyable as a result. That's not to say the game didn't still kill me over and over again, just that when I died it was my fault. Either because I suck at timing, because I suck at third person games, or because I'm just an idiot. And there was certainly a lot of that, but the game saves often and I never had to repeat the same thing more than three or, or four times before I got it right. To me, it felt like just about the perfect difficulty level for a story-driven game, and I may or may not have been playing with the difficulty set to the lowest level. If you're actually good at this sort of thing, I'm sure you can find a difficulty setting that'll work for you. If you're worse than I am, I'd be genuinely interested to see you play, because I was pretty sure that wasn't possible. One of the ways Crystal Dynamics inflated the difficulty of the game while cutting out quick-time events was with a staple of the Tomb Raider franchise, Puzzles. The reboot had puzzles in it, and if you were raiding any of the actual tombs scattered around the island, you got to experience some pretty well-made puzzles. But the main storyline had very few actual puzzles in it. Rise of the Tomb Raider keeps the optional tombs, which you can skip if you're both lame and a masochist, but it also adds quite a few puzzles to the main story that must be solved for the game to progress. It's nice to have some aspects of progression tied to my ability to reason through a problem rather than my ability to get headshots with a rifle. I thought this was a great choice, and I thought they struck a good balance between puzzle solving and action. I also thought the stealth mechanics were much improved in this game versus the 2013 Tomb Raider. My personal playstyle tends towards stealth, and the addition of features like your survival instincts changing color based on whether enemies could see each other helped a lot. I also like that I could put skill points toward stuff like auto-looting, silence assisting, and boosting my XP for chaining stealth kills. The pseudo-RPG aspects of these reboots were one of the things that drew me into the series, but the last game felt like it ignored stealth somewhat. To be fair, when I'm not going stealth, my playstyle is extremely Devil May Care run and gun, and that's where these RPG-styled features really shine. I wound up with a Lara who is good at the stuff I needed her to be good at, and who wasn't good at the stuff I never used. That customization, which is done well, sets the game apart. I also liked the added weapon and outfit customization introduced this go-round. 
The fact that different outfits and different weapons carry different stats, again, introduces some RPG customization to a third-person action shooter, and it's not ham-handed. It's well thought through and improves the game. I could go on and on. I loved the voice acting in the game, again, and the motion capture this time around was fantastic. The game is incredibly pretty and the action is engaging. The whole package is just really super fun. Rise of the Tomb Raider is excellent in just about everything it tries to do, and I'd recommend it to everyone. Yes, you. You specifically should play this game if you haven't already. What are the downsides? Well, let's do a sweep. You're mine. All of your other video game protagonists are going to look lame in comparison, I guess. That's probably a downside.